4, 1 through 13, and John 7, 16 through 18. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to the <coughs> Excuse me. It is he who gave some to the apostles, some to the prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. To prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. In John 7, 16 through 18, Jesus answered, My teaching is not my own. It comes from him who sent me. If anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. He who speaks on his own does so to gain honor for himself, but he who works for the honor of the one who sent him as a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. And this is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Thank you, Mr. Dustin. Before we get started, I've got some things I need to ask you. I know you've got plenty of time and yeah, I'm not going anywhere today. <laughs> My wife and I were at a church not too long ago, and we saw a mission. We visited. We weren't going there to, because of anything else. But we were visiting, and we saw this wonderful mission. And I, I just have to tell you about it because you well, you got to do it. You just have to do we're it. We're supposed to be preaching right now, Larry. Yeah, it's Sunday morning. I'm a little busy. <laughs> You know, it is only the week that I work. Oh! <laughs> well, you know, all I have to do is just give you the name and, and the contact person. So, just a second. So, you have a mission idea that you want to do. You have the name and contact information, and you want me to do it. Yeah. That's about the general idea. <laughs> okay, do you see I mean, you know, right, this picture? Right, and I'm retired, and, and we don't have we don't travel, and we don't have time. Well, you see, what's wrong with this picture is I think God's put that on your heart, and you need to be the person that makes the contact with them and follow up with them. So please do that tomorrow. And if you have a question, I'll be more than happy to help you. But this is your job as a layperson, not just my job as a clergy person. Yes, Pastor. <laughs> That's what I figured. That's what I figured. But, uh, okay, we, you think it's time to preach? Sure, we Teach. can try it. Have I, have I heard myself? <laughs> I'll tell you, before we get into that, and uh, Dustin, this is uh, Laity Sunday, and there are a whole lot more laity out here than there are you clergy. I know there's one over here, and maybe a few, a few spread out, but we have you like 99 to 1. <laughs> Did anybody read tomatoes? I hope not. <laughs> but anyway, we, I, I just want to take this particular moment before we do get into our, our scripture lessons today to say that we love you. Thank you. Amen. We don't just love you because you're funny. <laughs> we really love you because of Ashley and you know, Emily and Sam. No, we love you. You have 
been such a blessing to us. This is Pastor Appreciation Month on United Methodist Church. Please keep him in your prayers. We need Always. Him. Keep his family in your prayers. And just, let's just bless him as much as we can. He is our pastor. He is our shepherd. And he is who we look up to. So Dustin, thank you. And please tell Ashley. I will Emily sick today? Yes. She's been running a fever. So just keep her in your prayers. She's better, I think, this morning. But we didn't want to risk getting all of y'all sick. <laughs> we do appreciate that. Right. You notice that I, I, I guess, de-elevated or put you at that podium and not this podium. See, that's one of the joys of being having laity Sunday. I get to go over here and he has to go over here. <laughs> anyway, we are going to share a few things. And I hope that you will enjoy it. It's a little different. I know you're not used to sharing uh, sermons. It's a first. And Maybe a second. I think Ashley and I did something back in our first church when we were crazy trying to stop. Yeah, but you know, you and Ashley, y'all have a chemistry. I don't know about us. <laughs> we don't know. I hope not. <laughs> at any rate, I want to talk. Uh, Dan read. Ephesians, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful scripture. Ephesians 4, 1 through 13. But I want to pick out a couple of, uh, two verses. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope, when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. That's a lot of alls. Isn't it? But what, what is... Paul trying to tell us. He was telling his Ephesians, the Ephesians in Ephesus, the churches, what they needed to do to be unified. And these seven reasons, I just, every time I read them, I just think of laity and clergy, but there's more of us in the Lord. Praise God. I'm sorry, Ed. <laughs> You might help him out, Ed, if you can, but I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the terminology and the beauty of this particular area, these, these two verses, just radiate with me. They tell me so much about myself, and they tell me about my brothers and sisters. We are united in a common faith, a common belief, and a common love. We're baptized because of that. We love our God. We love our Lord Jesus Christ. We have hope. It's a hope. I just love this particular part, Dustin. And I want to say again, one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God. Paul gave us these seven, seven strong reasons why you, we should be unified. Why we should strive always to be unified. To work together. To build a bond of peace in this church. And to be what God would have us be. So Dustin, you know, the last few weeks you have, you have preached a beautiful series on the Apostles' Creed. Appreciate it. And if you said, I believe, one time, you've said it 55 times. <laughs> well, I believe. <laughs> ah, so that leads me to, what do you exactly believe, in, and what are some of the verses here that radiate with you and, and get you going? You know, the reason, Murray, that there's unity in the faith is if you go to Ephesians 4.11 with me, if you got your Bibles, can you throw it up on the screen for me, Anthony, Ephesians 4.11? Paul is talking to the church here in Ephesus. I'm not going to, anyway, I don't want to get too nerdy on y'all. But he says, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature personhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And so what Paul is doing here is Paul is listing out, he's saying it's not just the pastor's job to do it all. He actually lists five different things, and there's actually a really nerdy thing that I know in Greek that links shepherds and teachers to, I think, one gifting. So I believe there's four different giftings that Paul is talking about here. He's talking about apostles, people who start things, 
prophets, people who, you know, a lot of times you think prophets are as people that proclaim all the deep, mark, the deep, dark secrets of your soul. And some of them do that. But really, to me, a prophet is somebody who speaks the truth of God. Evangelists, people who are able to go and tell people the good news of who Jesus is. And pastors and teachers, people who lead God's people and teach God's word. I think, Lord willing, I have one of these gifts, right? Lord willing, I'm a pastor and a teacher. That's what I strive to be. Um, I was a church planner for a little bit. That didn't work out so well. I would have wished I would have had a little bit of foresight, knowledge, and knowing that evangelism isn't my strongest gift. But what Paul is saying is that if we want to have a mature church that's one, united, all together, then what it means is we have to work together so that the church can be equipped and mature. Now, when Paul is talking about maturity, he's not just talking about your age, okay? Because some of y'all have that down pat. <laughs> He's talking about your relationship with Christ and the depth of that relationship with you, that you have with him. That's what Paul is telling us, is that we gather together as one body so that we can glorify God. So Murray, how do we glorify God? You ask me that question? <laughs> I hope so. I, I just, you know, the glorification of God are found in the scriptures always. And this unity of the body that Dustin was talking about, Dustin, unity in the body doesn't come easy, does it? No. And it doesn't it mean that we always day. have to agree on all things at all times. We don't have to always agree? No. Well, good. We're in the right place. You can be a teammate. That's good. We, we don't always it. agree. Right. But we have to work be together. together and love one another and then move oh, forward God. a common vision and go on mission. Well, in answer to this, your question. I think it's found in, in Scripture. Again, Dan read it earlier. I just want to read it again. It is John uh, 7, 16 through 18. And uh, it is as Jesus answered. Of course, you know Jesus was always challenged. Always challenged, wasn't he? He had the answers, but his his unbelievable knowledge, well, we know where it came from, but Jesus answered the people that questioned him about knowledge of the Word. My teaching is not my own. It comes from him who sent me. If anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak it on my own. He who speaks on his own does so to gain honor for himself. But he who works for the honor of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Now, Dustin, pastor, be a pastor now. You've got to be a pastor now. All right. Because this is a very important topic. It's a very important thing that we get into because... A lot of us teach. A lot of us do what I'm doing here occasionally. You do it all the time. You preach and you teach and you do this on a regular basis. So give us some guidance. Show us the way how we should follow these scriptures. Well, I think I've said it over and over again. One of my common statements in the church is we do not exist to do what people want us to do, but we're here to glorify God. That's the reason we're here, is God has, Lord willing, changed your life in such a way that we want to worship Him and give Him thanks and praise, and in such a way that we want to tell other people about Him. And for us to do that, we have a common set of teachings. That's why I preached on the Apostles' Creed for six weeks, is because this is the standard of who we are as Christians. Um, these are certain things that we believe, um, because we are followers of Christ. Um, I was asked once, like, how do we know as Methodists what we believe? When I was a young clergy person, I was actually told, well, Methodists, we just kind of believe whatever. You know, I mean, you could be over here, you could be over there, you could be anywhere. And while I do agree, appreciate that in the Methodist church, we can always agree to disagree. Um, in the Book of Discipline, and have y'all ever seen this bad boy? This is so awesome. <laughs> this is the standard rules and operating procedures of the United Methodist Church. All, let me see, I think it's like... Um, 800 small pages with small font, or big pages with small font. 
In section number three, there's actually a section entitled Our Doctrinal Standards and General Roles for the Methodist Church. And so it talks about things like the Trinity and the resurrection of Christ, original sin, free will, the sacraments, baptism, communion, and listen to these, of Christian men's good works on the rulers of the United States of America. Yeah, we have a section on how we should treat the rulers of the United States of America. So um, whether you love our president or hate him, maybe you should read that section. <laughs> what to do with the Bible, the Holy Spirit, you name it. Um, some Methodist has thought about it and said, we need to make a stance on it, and this is where it is. One of the things in the Book of Discipline it talks about is all doctrinal questions really come back to the teachings of John Wesley. Now, was John Wesley Jesus Christ? No, no right? So that doesn't mean that 100% of the time I'm going to agree with John Wesley, because he wasn't a God. Jesus was. But in the doctrinal standards, there are Wesley's standard 52 sermons. I actually have two copies of this because I need to read it twice, I guess. Uh, that teach us the Wesleyan heritage that we come from. You know, Wesley was not perfect. He did a lot of things. He did a few things that I think he messed up horribly. Um, he wasn't a good husband, for us to start off with. And that's one of the things I strive to be. But Wesley did pave a way for us in our Wesleyan heritage for what it means for us to live out the Christian faith, Murray. Yeah. And to me, it all comes back to what he taught. One of the things that he talked about was called the Wesleyan Quadrilateral. That's a fancy word for four different things. There's scripture, <coughs> experience, tradition, and reason. And these four things work together to help us discern what the Bible says. Um, he believed in sola scriptura, which is um, the Bible alone. And so... First and foremost, we look to the Bible and see what it has to say about something. Then we use our church tradition, our experience, and our reason to how that lives out in our life. And I think that's part of how um, I try my best to operate as a pastor. As I try, um, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I try my best to be 100% completely and totally unoriginal. <laughs> because... If I'm being original and have this divine insight, more than likely another person thought about it, and it was probably heresy. And so my goal is to take the teachings of the church and to uphold them to the best of my ability. Wow. So, Dustin, the, uh, us, we laity, we need to be kind of careful with what we do, like in Sunday school classes, Bible studies, and groups. You know, we can't just go out there on the edge and just... Plug something out, huh? Right. Because you'll be watching this, won't you? Yeah. <laughs> All the time. You'll be watching. <laughs> Private eyes are watching you. Uh, so there, 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 are, are, there are a couple. I knew that. I know I knew the answer to that before you ever answered it. But uh, at any rate, you know, there are a couple of ways to, for you as individuals, for me, uh, for us to be able to kind of test the statements. And I always, I, I read this in my Bible the other day, and it said, do the words of the speaker, do the words of the speaker agree with and not contradict the Bible? And number two, do the words that you hear from the speakers that you hear, do they point to God's will and not our will? Well, those are two very important test questions, I think, Dustin. Yeah, I think so that we can look at, because we hear, I mean, today's, we are filled with media. And be careful what you listen to, right? Right. Be careful what you listen to. You know, Abraham Lincoln once said that you can believe everything you read on the internet. <laughs> I remember him saying that. Yeah. It was such foresight on his part. Well, thank you, Dustin. I, I, I love our scriptures this morning. Uh, we do have a part three here that, that kind of goes into a little about our local church, about Community United Methodist Church, and we're closing up right now. But we have talked about being one in the body. And I think one of the reasons that I want Dustin to be with me today is, yes, we're a majority laity, but we are all one. Amen. We're all one. Dustin is not just a pastor. Dustin feels... He has emotions. He has everything about him. But he's just like a regular human being. He has tears. <laughs> just like a regular human being. <laughs> well, close. Uh, we, 
we put y'all on that superhuman status, and it's just, he's a, he's a person. Well, it's like Superman, right? Like, he's <laughs> one in the body. Yeah. But anyway, and also, you know, we need to be one together in God's will and His Word. And I realize we will not always agree on everything that comes out of Scripture. But we need to have that love in our hearts to respect and appreciate the Word of God as we hear it and as we understand it. So Dustin, you know, I've asked you questions on one. Do you have any questions you want to ask me? Yeah. <laughs> I got a couple. Oh, no. I've been thinking about it. It's only 7 to 12. Yeah. <laughs> That's eight, okay. It's 8 to 12. I was talking to the youth, and we were wondering, Murray, are unicorns real? Uh, let's vote. <laughs> I was a superintendent of school. Oh, wait. No, you're right. You don't have to answer that one, but it is getting close. So what are we having for lunch? Oh, wait, no, that's a question? Yeah. Oh, no, you want a real question. We're going to have it for lunch. Yeah. I like a real question. And how many think unicorns are real? Okay. <laughs> Okay. They missed Noah's boat. Like they're, to say. they're real to the you. Okay. What does he have? So, about? yeah, we're, Murray, as the lay leader of our church, where did the laity think that we're headed? One of the questions I've been asking is, you know, Lord willing, my wife and family and I hope to be here for the next nine to ten years. If we're going to be here for ten years, what does that future look like for us? Well, I hope. Just ask a hard question, why don't you? Uh, <laughs> The vision of our church. You know, one of the beautiful things that we did, the Ad Council went into a session in September, and uh, we talked about the vision of the Community United Methodist Church. And I hope, as that study, and, and Dustin facilitated that work, and he worked through, and we did groups, and we did all this, you know, the way to come about the consensus and common agreement. And we come up with four basic areas for our future of our church. They're not really specific in nature, but they are visionary in nature. And I think if they will flash those up, one is a church for the community. Now, our name says it all. We are a community united Methodist church. Well, let's be community united Methodist church. And let's be a part of that. Number two, a church that mirrors our community. What does that mean? Demographics, culturally, ethnicity, different things. If you go out and about in the community of Ruidoso, that's what we need to bring right into this church. We need to invite, 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 and grow and grow. We're building a new sanctuary. It can fill up if we work hard at it. The third one, and we're already doing this pretty good, Dustin. A church that, mission, that is missions-focused. This church is missions-focused. But we can always do more, can't we? Like this one I have for you. Yeah. Let's yeah. call that guy tomorrow. We'll give you know how it goes. We'll get rid of it. We'll get together. But we can always do more. We do a lot. There are a lot of great things here. But let's always be looking for what the community needs us to do or what the area, or what the world needs us to do. Let's have that vision. And I love this last one. A church that loves our community. We don't just say we love somebody. We love somebody. We care. We do. We care for each other in this, this church. We nurture one another in this church. All the time. I see it all the time. We care and we cover for each other. Let's truly love the community as we love each other. So those are my closing answers, Dustin. Thanks to your leadership, our administrative council moved with this. And I think you're going to be hearing a lot more about these over the weeks ahead. So, Dustin, I'll let you close out. Yeah, this is um, something that out of our church leadership we've discussed basically since I've been here is where is God calling us and what is God calling us to do? This isn't something that I stood up in front of the church or our leadership and said, this is what you're going to do. We got together in small groups and prayed for months at a time. And in September, our leadership gathered together 
And these are the four areas that they believe we need to focus on as a congregation. We need to be a church for our community, live into our namesake. We need to love the community like Christ loves us. We need to um, keep a church that looks like our community. You know, and I was really scared. I've told y'all I want to be here for at least five, if not ten years. Man, look around the room. What are we going to look like in ten years? That kind of scares me a little bit. Right? So we need to begin to reach our community as Christ has called us to do it. And we need to be a church that's continually engaged in the mission of Christ that he's called us to do. And so this is from them, and you will hear more about it. And I am so excited about the future of this congregation. I was counting children today. We have 12 children under the age of 18 in our sanctuary today. That's huge for us. <laughs> So, God is doing great things in our midst, and if we continue to seek Him first, God will continue to bless us and lead us and guide us onto His path. Thank you, Dustin. Now so, we are finished, and this is just a, a glimpse of what clergy and laity can do together, even in a sermon. Look at that. <laughs>